Do you need to use a relational database and you're tired of managing servers, patching them, worrying about scaling up and down and dealing with all of the other admin around a server? What if you could have a relational database that spans multiple regions and you can set it up with just a couple of clicks? Well, uh, Amazon Aurora DSQL has just launched in preview mode. So this allows you to spin up a database across uh, multiple AWS regions. At the moment it's available in US East 1 and US East 2. And in this video, I'm quickly going to show you how to create a cluster. And then we're going to hop over into the workshop demo to just show you how it would work if you had a, an Amplify app uh, deployed in two separate regions. And they're each going to be communicating with the instance inside the region that they're working with. So let's hop into the video and let me show you how to set up a cluster. Let's use the console to create an Amazon Aurora DSQL cluster. The first option is to select add linked regions. And we're going to use US East 1 for that. And then you also need to select a witness region. Then you can decide if you want to turn off deletion protection or not. I recommend leaving it on. And lastly, we are going to set the name of our cluster. We are going to call this one demo cluster. Now, when we hit the create cluster button, it'll take a few minutes for us to spin up this cluster. And while that is going, um, what we're going to do after this is to connect to the cluster using Cloud Shell. So we'll show you how to use the uh, authorization token that we can generate in the console or we can generate in the uh, CLI as well. And then we're going to connect to our cluster with that. So with that, our cluster is ready. So now let's go into our cluster. Now, if you go to the linked regions um, settings, you can see there the cluster ID of the linked cluster in US um, East 1. Now we're going to copy the endpoint and we are going to paste this into an environment variable um, along with two other ones. And then we are going to open up Cloud Shell so we can actually access our database. Now we're going to use environment variables just to make it easier to keep track of all the different values and not have one very long uh, CLI command to execute. So pasting in the first three ones, which would be the cluster endpoint, the database name, and the username. Now we need to get a token to connect to our database with. So connect on the, uh, click on the connect button, copy the token, and then we are going to paste this into another environment variable called PG password. And we'll set that here in the terminal. Now with that done, we're going to execute a normal uh, psql command to connect to our database. Now, while it's useful to be able to get the token from the console, we don't want to continuously uh, keep copy and pasting from the console every single time we want to connect to our database. So let's um, use the AWS CLI to generate the token for us that we can then set in the environment variable, and then we can use that to connect to the database. So you'll see the command on screen for copying or getting that uh, token generated. And now we have that set, and now we can connect back to our database again using our environment variables and our command. And just to show you that the database is empty, we are going to be adding some tables under the schema X points. So what we can do is to first do a select to see what the schema is under X points and there's nothing. And now we're going to use um, an import command to actually create some tables. After the tables are created, we can run that same command again. And now we should be able to see our list of tables. Now we're going to switch over to a demo of the workshop on how to set up a cluster and build an app. We're going to be deploying an Amplify app in two separate regions, connecting to the endpoints inside our cluster in each of those regions. So on the left-hand side, you can see the US East 1 region, and you can see the uh, US East 2 region on the right-hand side. And you can see there that the cluster ID in the linked region matches the one on the right-hand side. And just to double check, we are showing the console uh, that we are in those specific regions. Now that we have our databases, uh, let me show you the functions that we have or an example function. So this is a function that gets the rewards and you can see the environment variable is set to the US East 1 um, cluster endpoint for our cluster. And then for the other function, which is in the second region, um, you can see that this one is actually connecting to US East 2. Now our Amplify app, um, we're going to open up quickly. Um, it's a basically shopping app that you can uh, choose to buy items on using uh, points inside your account. So we now have both versions of the app open and you can see the URLs are different because they're completely separate instances of Amplify apps. So we're going to log in with our username and password, which we um, have set up to be in both of the applications Cognito um, pool to be able to connect. So on the left hand side, we are now logged in and we are going to just double check on the right hand side by refreshing the page that we aren't logged in that side. Okay, we're not. So now what we do is once again, log in on that side as well. Okay, we're now logged in. So now 
we can see that our um, items on the left hand side uh, are there and we are going to start adding some to our shopping cart. So that's the page view of an item. And now we add some printers to our um, shopping cart and then a suitcase and then some um, Halloween decorations. And if we refresh on the right hand side, we can now see that we those items are on the same cart because the cart's content per user is stored in our database. Now what we're going to do is use the other region, uh, US East 2, and start leasing the items one by one. And then we're going to go and refresh the uh, shop uh, the page on the first region and we'll see that our shopping cart is now suddenly empty. So while I was clicking around, it takes a bit of time to click between the two. So let's take a look if we can see this more in a real time action. So we're gonna go back to Cloud Shell and we are going to create a small shell script that does a uh, SQL query for us to get uh, the data for our specific user from the database. So first we set up our environment variables again for our command, we log into the database and now we're just quickly gonna check the schema to get the table name for where the cart data is stored and it's called shopping cart items. And what we need to do now is find the UUID of our user. So let's paste in a command to see where Jane Doe's uh, record is. There we go, we've got our quid. And now we're gonna copy and paste that into a command that we will uh, then execute inside of a shell script. So, okay. There we go. We can see that the shopping cart is also empty at the moment. That's good to know. So now we're going to create the script called uh, watchcart.sh. And it's just a plain bash uh, shell script. So we add the shebang at the top, just saying bin bash so that we know what shell to execute for it. And now we're pasting in a psql command with the actual query at the end with our ID of our user. When we run this, this will basically pull back all or pull all the records from the database for that specific user in the shopping cart table. So now we're going to make it uh, executable by adding the X flag to the script. Then we're going to run it once just to make sure that we are actually getting data back from it. And we are, good. So now we're going to use the watch command and we're going to use uh, an interval of one second. So that's what the dash N1 does. So it tells it to run it every second. So basically you can see the time at the top right ticking along as it keeps on polling our database. So now when we go ahead and click around and add items in the US East 1 region, we can see them pop up there on the right uh, where we're reading from the second region's database. And similarly, when we delete things out of our uh, shopping cart again, we can see that our other are disappearing there on the right. So that was the short version of Amazon Aurora DSQL. Now, there's a couple of steps that we did skip, like how do you set up your connection inside an application if you're using the AWS SDK or if you want to use the token. Normally, you would have a password that you could pull, let's say, from Amazon Secrets Manager. But we'll cover all of that in a future video, and I'll show you all the little bits that you need to put together to actually build an application that can use um, Aurora DSQL. But we'll cover that later. If you found this useful, please give this video a like and also subscribe to our channel so we can keep doing more of these hands-on videos for you. And let me know in the comments if there's anything more you want to find out or a specific scenario you would like me to test. In any case, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.